Good job, Morning Roast. Sock it to me. Hey, 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 hey. Yee! All right, download that Odyssey app right now. Our main antenna for the station was damaged overnight due to high winds. Crews were working to fix it. Download the Odyssey app right now or watch via YouTube to get the morning roast on 95 Silver the Game. Uh, let's get the crash real quick before we get to Mike Bassett. Crash, what's happening? You're on the roast, man. What's going on? How you guys doing this morning? Not bad. Not bad. So the whole Wiggins thing, I mean, I have a business with about 15 employees, and I know somebody had to take some time off. I would need to know a couple details as just far as how long it's going to be, things like that, but, you know, I'm not going to ask personal information. You know, you might get some details here and there, but that's, that's between the boss and the employee, and I know that it's different with basketball players and with, you know, how much they mean to the me and everything, but the biggest thing with people just going crazy is people just aren't used to not knowing everything anymore. Yeah. Social media and Twitter and everything. People don't understand. Back in the day, you'd read the newspaper, you'd hear stuff, you'd watch the news. But now with Twitter, you know everything instantly. Yeah. So the football players signing with your team three days before free agency even happens. And people just don't understand and don't have the mental capacity to just chill and let things play out because at the end of the day, it's none of your business what's going on with the dude. Obviously, it's pretty personal. No doubt. That's a good no point. Doubt. And yep. I, like a, a lot of the athletes, I don't follow a ton, but the ones I do follow, Instagram now, you see a lot of steps of, of what a person does throughout the day, what they want you to see at least throughout the day. And there is a um, sense of entitlement's too strong of a word, but like we do know a lot. And and whatever people share, you, you pick up on. And you only see, obviously – slices right. of what they want you to see but i do think that's a good point there be like we fall brandon Ayuk follows who online yeah. what he, he liked what post they're following a, a weatherman in chicago like we do that crazy stuff like and yeah. i don't i think it's weirdo behavior like who is monitoring right. these accounts yeah, nah, but that I, is what a lot of fans and, and this is not exclusive to warrior fans this is every fan base in america does this no no doubt brandon i sent the tweet yesterday 1k is a fourth option and they run for its offense i'm as really I'm as real as it get. Words a little baby and SG. I'm ready to stand on business every time year four rockets up. I don't even know what that means, but people are going crazy. <laughs> All right, people were losing their minds over Brandon Ayuk yesterday <laughs> so, because of social media. He's not going anywhere. We have, right. the, we have the franchise yeah, tag. No, we have the fifth-year option. Why are we in a rush to either pay or trade everyone? No, nah, right, let's bring in Mike Pass. Right. He deals with it down in Dallas. He knows he knows all about it with Cowboy fans. Host on 105.3, the fan, Casey and KC masterpiece. Of course, we love Mike on this show. Uh, we know about his baseball career. He's got some history with Barry Bonds, but he loves his Dallas Mavericks. Mike's good morning, man. Welcome back to the Bay. Good morning. Two disappointed fan bases talking to each other right now. Oh my gosh! It's oh. well. Let me ask you because you, you you guys make game the trade for Kyrie Irving. Game. game recognizes game, <laughs> and the Warriors are coming in limping. And we don't even know what the hell type of team we're going to get today on the road. How surprised are you about the Warriors' lack of success on the road this season? Can't believe it. Because of their history. Because of, honestly, recent history. Because even the young guys last year, coming into this season, I just thought uh, Kuminga and Moody, and I know Jordan Poole had a very good year last year in playoff run. I just thought those guys are going to take it to another level. Because I remember... The game the Mavs won in the playoffs, the Mavs were up by close to 30 points, and those young guys came in and yep. kind of made it a game for a second. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, dang, those guys are just going to get mm. better, so it's just going to add depth, and it just hasn't happened. I, I can't believe that a veteran team, a team that just won a championship, is struggling so much in the regular season in Golden State. Yeah, there's been a lot of things going on. I mean, there's just so many different things throughout the year. Uh, but for a second, we do have a, a commonality here, and there's an old saying, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, I think. Uh, something to that effect. Dylan Brooks, big enemy of Golden State Warriors. Uh, what happened with him and Kyrie the other day? We asked the Dallas Mavericks play-by-play -play guy, and he was not happy with me. So what was your interpretation of what happened after <laughs> was the game? Was it Chuck Cooperstein? Yeah, Chuck Cooperstein, yeah. <laughs> yeah here, let's play listen it for to Mike. This. Listen here, to listen this, to Mike. This. What happened with the jersey swap between Dylan Brooks and Kyrie Irving? I didn't see it. Can't tell you. Oh, no idea, huh? Nope. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you think Kyrie's going to play then tomorrow? I have no idea. Is that the Chuck you know and love? 
It can be. I, <laughs> yeah. sat with, I sat with Chuck, though, when I'm doing uh, pre and post for the Texas Rangers, and we'll have fun conversations about baseball, a little bit about basketball. But if he does get irritated, that can be Chuck. <laughs> so what was your interpretation of what happened with the jersey swap? That seems to be kind of like the World Cup thing, and, and I know soccer's been doing this for a long yeah. time. Now they do it after all the games, football, basketball, baseball. What happened the other night with Dylan Brooks and Kyrie? Well, I think a little bit of this, Dylan Brooks, I mean, I don't think he intentionally hurt. I do think he does try to intentionally hurt players at times, but I don't think he was trying to intentionally hurt Kyrie or uh, Jaden Hardy the other night, but he did hurt them. He he did, you know, got his the, the feet tangled up type of deal and, and had foot and ankle things with two players during that game. And I just don't think, I don't know Kyrie very well at all. He has been an A-plus person while he's been here. I'm scared to death of when that changes, but he <laughs> <laughs> been an unbelievable uh, teammate and, and everything here when he's healthy enough to play. I think a little bit of this, guys, I, correct me if I'm wrong, this is just my opinion. I don't know. If I want to exchange my jersey with Ken Griffey Jr., I want Ken Griffey Jr.'s jersey. I don't think there's any part of Ken Griffey Jr. that wants a Mike Bassett jersey. <laughs> right. no, like I, I just think Kyrie was like, okay, you want my jersey. I don't want yours. Like You're not. You're just an average player who's just – He's talking a lot, and we talked about Dylan Brooks yesterday. I wonder when certain guys like Patrick Beverly or Dylan Brooks, do they get told by family? Do they get told by agents? Do they get told by themselves? Like inside their head is, I'm just an average good role player. What can take me to another level? What if I talk as much as I possibly can, challenge the best players in the league like I'm on their level, and then all of a sudden I become more popular? So. I mean, Dylan Brooks is a nice player. I would love having him on the Mavs as a guy who plays 25 minutes, you know, uh, maybe even 30 minutes a game. But he's nothing special. He's a hardworking, good role player, but he's talking so much. <laughs> I just don't think Kyrie really wanted his jersey. And right. No, Mike, I don't blame him. He, he needs somebody in his life like me to my nephew. I say to him all the time, you're not that guy. I say it to him all the time at Little League practice. I'm like, you're not that guy. He, someone in his life you're needs to tough, tell him that. You're a tough Little League coach, man. What are you telling the kids? It's, called being, re- it's <laughs> called being real. Right, Jeez. Mike? Come on, you got to be real with kids. I, unfortunately, yes. I have to coach middle school you baseball know. today Thank afterwards, you. and there's times where I'll move the kids that have never played baseball before. I'll have them in a group <laughs> where they're working way more basic stuff than the kids that kind of play baseball. Yeah, Thank man, you. You guys are harsh, man. Mike Bassett, 105 3 to fair. Casey. Yeah, we got we have Dylan Brooks fatigue. I mean, he's talking left and right. <laughs> he's talking. He's suspended for tonight. By the way, he picked up his 18th technical. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's suspended yeah. again. So, oh. I mean, Dylan Brooks, Dylan the villain. I mean, we can't stand him out here. In the Bay that gets area. me every time. Uh, I mean, Dylan the villain. He's unbelievable. So, Luka Doncic. Yeah, where is he at? How's his game grown? Because at times I thought, okay, he's learning how to play off the ball. And then later on in the season, right before Kyrie Irving landed in Dallas, it felt like Luka was falling back into those bad habits where he's ball pouting, ball pouting, complaining about calls. Where is he at now? How has he grown from last season's Western Conference Finals appearance? You know, it's funny. I think uh, his game, he's a little bit better. And it's really tough, right? Because he keeps making first-team All-NBA, and he's one of the best in the league, especially offensively, if not the best. And I feel like at times he's grown there. But his maturity has not grown at all. And and I love him to death. I mean, he's a guy that I do think will lead you to a championship eventually with the right players around you. And he's going to be one of the five best players in the league for probably another decade. But he's got to learn to let it go. Uh, I, I, I it, it drives us insane in Dallas on how great he is and how much he can get distracted by three referees. It's not going to change. And then... I think I might be too harsh on this. He gives up an average of 10 points a game because he refuses to play defense because he's so mad at the referees. <laughs> and it just it drives us insane. Huh. I get it, man. Everybody has complained in basketball history. But when you stop playing the game of basketball in live action to do the complaining, you're now hurting your team. And that's, that's the one thing is he's got to mature. He's unbelievably great. I don't want to bash Luca at all, as in, like, he's not a great player. He is unbelievable. But he's got to mature and realize those calls are not going to change in live action. 
It's a great point. Mike Basket, uh, Mike Basic with us, former Major League Baseball pitcher. He's a host on 105.3 The Fan uh, down there in Texas. And so I, I love talking with you because you just make me smile in general because you love sports. And I know you're a big baseball guy. So I want to ask you about what happened last night, uh, World Baseball Classic. I loved it. I thought it was a great representation for the sport. And similar, it's, it's not the same comp, but Steph Curry, we see him and we're like, oh, little kids can relate to that even though he's humongous because of the, the long shooting. They can't can't relate to Shaq, right? When I watch Otani, right, I'm not saying it's relatable in the sense that people think they can do that, but there is something about every Little League team, every high school team in America has somebody who pitches and bats third, fourth, or fifth. Like, I love that he's able to do both of these things, and I just think it's just so fun seeing that on the grandest stage last night of the WBC. It's amazing because I had given up on Otani after the COVID season. Uh, and I, I work with Mark McLemore, a guy who played 20 years in the major leagues uh, with the Texas Rangers, and he had given up on him, too. It's just like, it's just not going to work. As much as we want this to work, pitching and hitting, there's just too many injury risks and trying to do it at the same time at the highest level. And then in 21, he explodes. Obviously, last year he had another great year. And then last night, so fun to watch. I, that was That was playoff baseball. That was yep. NFL playoff football. Uh, type of environment that was so great to we're a week away from the season starting and you get that as an introduction into 2023 baseball unbelievable and Otani is he's the greatest baseball player of all time because yes Barry Bonds or Mike Trout or there's plenty of hitters that you can say hey they're better hitters than Otani and there's honestly plenty of pitchers that you could say or Greg Maddox maybe a Nolan Ryan are better than Otani but a dude doing it at that high of a level at the same time it's never been done in the history of baseball. And as Smoltz said yesterday, Babe Ruth only kind of did it for two years. He was a pitcher first, then a hitter second. Mike, I love you. You know I do. I love you a lot more than R.J. Sean and Bobby Boucher <laughs> down there. I know. They're, they're, uh, they're right next to me finishing up their show right now. Yeah, I, 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 I love you a lot, Mike. They don't like us, but, I don't think. But don't you think it's a little premature to say greatest baseball player of all time? A little disrespectful to Mays, the usual, I, Bob totally, Gibson, all these totally great players. It, because if he were to, I hate saying this, but if he blew out his elbow again, which he yeah. did you know, in 2009, if he blew out his elbow this year right. and couldn't ever pitch again, then we're going, wow, that was the greatest two-year thing right. I ever saw in my life right. in baseball. But to your point, yes, he probably right. needs to have another five years of being a no pitcher doubt. and a hitter he, at a very yeah. high level to go, look, there's hitters that are better than him, and there's pitchers that are better than him, but we never saw a human being be able to do it. And I've talked to the Rangers before, and they're like, here's what's tough about Americans doing this is we're going to draft that American exactly. player and in double A, is he going to be at the same level of pitching and hitting at the same time to develop right. at the same rate? That's a great point. And usually yeah. the answer is no. Yeah, that, that, that's a good point. You know, he's so good, though, Mike, that I believe the Giants, and I I'm, I don't know if the Giants are going to sign him, but they've been striking out on these free agents. Aaron yeah, Judge, yeah. Carlos yeah. Correa, we know about that situation. Bryce Harper, <laughs> Shohei before, Giancarlo Stanton. If I'm the Giants, or if I'm any organization for that matter, Texas may even do this. I'm starting an offer with Shohei Otani saying, hey, here's $75 million per year. That's how good I think he is, Mike. 75 per year. I'm buying for two players. I'm excited. He's got. He's going to give you about 25 starts a season. Uh, so I'm paying for that. I'm paying for the 30 to 40 jacks and the plate discipline that he has and the plate presence that he has. I'm starting at $75 million per year. That's how I think I – am I crazy for that? I don't think you are, and you'd have to talk to a business person better than I, I am, but I believe the Rangers' revenue when they had you Darvish, you know, very right. different than Otani. Mm -hmm. yeah. you Darvish was the – they made so much money really? from Japanese people See? watching – the Texas Ranger nope. game yeah. nope. because millions of people every night when you mm -hmm. Darvish pitched, it was, Hey, we're watching this in, in our you know country. And so if you do get Otani, I wonder when you start going, Oh gosh, it's 75 mil a year. That's impossible. But what if, and I don't know the number, what if he generates Otani generates 25 million extra revenue coming right. in from Japan yeah. every year that you, you don't have unless you have them. So can you knock that number down to 50 million? If you look like, 
that money right there, you know, we, we knock off a third of $75 million immediately mm. because of now the Japanese revenue that we're getting. That's I don't know. I, I'm, I'm guessing on numbers. No. You're, you're, you're riding the same ballpark. Bob Nightingale yeah. basically told us the same yeah. thing yesterday. I love that. And, Mike, I, I do want to have you back on later on in the year, talk about Bochi because I think you're going to love him just as a person. Yeah. He's, he's the best. Yeah. And I'm sad that he's... We're really excited. We can now... It looks like the Rangers have a competitive team. I'm not picking them to make the playoffs, but I'm picking them to win about 84 oh. games and just missed the playoffs. Yeah. So I think we're going to have a good year here in uh, Texas uh, watching you, baseball. You guys have my favorite first baseman, at Daniel Lowe. Look at ah, you. Look at you. Nah. No, but real quick before you get on out, because I do want to ask you about some of these rule changes. You say that you coach at the at the younger levels, as do I. I love the game. I want to see it get sped up at the big league level because it's just – it. the ball's not in play, and the three true outcomes is driving me absolutely nuts. And that's part of why I really enjoyed watching the WBC, obviously the fervor and everything, the ball in play. Play more with the Japanese team. Um, what are your thoughts on these rule changes? Because I do think the pitch clock is outstanding, and I love some of these rule changes in the shift ban and all that stuff. I really do like the pitch clock. I always pitch with pace. I was taught to pitch with pace. So I'm going to really enjoy the pitch clock. Players are making adjustments. I don't think we're going to get to August, September, really important baseball and see games decided by uh, a timed out, you know, type of timed strike three or timed ball four. So I think the players will adjust to that. It'll be interesting to see kind of everything else. I'm okay with the bases. I've been on the field in spring training. They do look a lot bigger when you're on the field than they do when you're in the stands. Um, I'm okay with everything. The one thing that does become tough is if you have a good base runner on mm. uh, to only pick twice. Because as a left-hander, sometimes I might show you a bad move just to try yep. to get my good move to work. Well, if I show a bad move, I'm down to only one move left. And if I make that move and don't get him, now I'm in a situation. If I don't pick him off that third time or he takes off early and I step off, you know, uh, it'll be interesting if teams take advantage of things, too, with the time clock. I saw this in spring training. A Dodgers pitcher came set with 10 seconds to I go, and that. the hitter right. used his timeout, and the pitcher held the ball for nine seconds. And the, p the hitter couldn't do anything about it. He just had to stand there and hold for nine seconds, and he struck out on that pitch because it's tough to stand there for nine seconds and not move. I love it. I love it. Mike Bassick, former Major League Baseball pitcher, uh, 105.3 The Fan down in Dallas, and, of course, the Rangers pre- and post-game uh, host on Valley Sports Southwest. Mike, you're really good. Tell RJ Sean and Bobby Boucher, we're really apologized about what happened <laughs> in January. They'll be okay. Okay. I'll tell when we go on – Talk at like nine forty five our time here. I'll tell him I'll be like, hey man, those guys from San Francisco, man, really they like want to apologize. To yeah, you. we want we want to talk to him again next football. Mike, season. I I really get a kick out of talking with you. Like I honestly, all the sports, I, I really love our conversations. You have a great day. Well, well, thanks guys. All right, hopefully Bill Russell doesn't show up again for Golden State against the Mavs. <laughs> oh boy, I don't know if we have that size. <laughs> you see this roster? <laughs> oh man, you Mike Bassick's great.